Welcome to Better Relationships, Better Life, a podcast where you'll gain insights from relationship experts and entrepreneurial couples who have moved through conflict and into a better life. Crack the clarity code and create deeper connections beyond the messiness of relationships. Here's your host, Judy K. Herman. Today, we're continuing our conversation with Dr. Stan Tatkin on part two of simple ideas that will save your marriage. It still takes two. Before we do, you'll want to tap into free resources from my website, judycounselor.com. One of those is the relationship stress quiz. Now, if you haven't already, you'll want to go back and listen to part one of our series as we address how to thrive in secure functioning relationships. We left off with the relationship comes first over being right. Listen in as we understand why. This is part two of simple ideas that will save your marriage. It still takes two. Here in this model, the relationship is the center. Uh, the relationship comes first over being right. My family was very relationship-centered. Um, we would uh, suffer greatly if, the, if something was off with any of us, and we would all be moved to come back to the table and apologize, make amends, and do something to put the relationship back together again. Wow. So that's relationship-centered, and that's one of the hallmark, uh, hallmarks of secure uh, attachment, by the way. That's fascinating. It's it's really honoring our, like you said, it's it's the bi, it's the psychobiological, like the the feeling, um, and and the touching of the toes before going to bed, even if you are angry. How I mean, you really do go to bed angry. Some people, yeah. I mean, you well, do. We have. And, we yeah. have. I mean, it's yeah. not a regular thing. Uh -huh. um, um, but uh, you know, uh, uh, not that long ago, I remember. Um, uh, I was really angry with, with Trace and we were, you know, she, she, when she goes to sleep, she just knocks, she just conks out. And so sure enough, um, she was conking out and, uh, and I was thinking, uh, you know, oh, how am I going to punish her? Oh, <laughs> badly. Oh. And I remember our, you know, our deal. Um, but I also remember what I teach and that is, if I didn't do something, I would simply suffer the entire night. I wouldn't mm -hmm. sleep well. I'll get sick, um, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the the neurochemicals and hormones that we pump through our brain and body when we're under this kind of stress is uh, what we call neurotoxic. It burns mm -hmm. cells and mm -hmm. it adds something called allostatic load, mm -hmm. which is wear and tear on all the organs. So that's one downside. I'm getting, I'm, I'm moving myself closer to death. Um, mm -hmm. The relationship becomes more threatening, more dangerous because I'm left alone with my own mind, which by the way, isn't Disneyland. And I'm practicing everything about uh, why I'm angry. Mm -hmm. There is no upside, in other words. And so I just reached over and just kind of made myself move over and I grabbed her sweet hand and oh. I squoze it or squeezed it or whatever the proper way of saying it. And she squeezed it back and I felt oh. this immediate relief. Wow. And um, that's the whole idea is when we do the right thing and it's the hardest thing to do in the moment, we feel actually a hit of self-esteem i actually felt proud of myself <laughs> mm, yes, <laughs> for, for yes overcoming my own five-year-old and uh and all was fine uh wow. the anger dropped everything and i was able to sleep well and all of that so we have to put in principles together as a twosome because human the human primate has some issues where yeah we're really smart and we're really stupid um we're too automatic and we forget and we repeat, but we also misunderstand each other uh, most of the time. Uh, our memories are not what we think, they're terrible. Uh, our perceptions are constantly playing tricks on, our, on ourselves. Um, and, uh, and we are basically selfish animals um, that are opportunistic and moody and fickle. So we have to put things in place to keep us in line, just like we do with children, just like we do in society. We can't trust the other person's goodwill to do that all the time because we're, if we're under enough stress, we're gonna probably act out. 
So that's why we think ahead and we come up with principles of how we're going to govern each other. So say we both. Um, we never threaten the relationship. We decided that in, a, uh, in the advance. It never happens. Uh, uh, you know, and so that existential threat never is used. Uh, and, uh, and then there are other, other things. Um, we do, you know, for my wife and I, we share everything. So fully transparent, um, nothing hidden. Uh, and uh, the left and right hand always knows what they're doing. Um, this... let, let me pause for a moment because, um, you know, I, I did see your, the Ten Commandments. And, and so that's what you're talking about is, is having, having this agreement. Since, be, since become um, yes. principles of secure functioning, because that was really yes, yes. on deadline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, like, right, so how often do you think people need to actually review that? Because they can agree on paper. They go, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. This is an ideal. And then they just don't do it. Because I think they didn't really sit down and think it through. Um, the, these principles of governance aren't a luxury. They're a necessity. Mm. Um, mm. It means we're not naive. It means that, uh, that we know, like all human beings, we need limits. And we, to, we need to decide what those limits are together, not separately, so that we both agree we really want this. Um, and then we think about all the contingencies, conditions around, um, uh, do we really want this and how much do we want it and how do we do, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then, and then we put it in place and it becomes perfect. So the principles are perfect, even though we're not, therefore it's not a list of rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, principles are higher principles are. I'm adhering to an agreement that serves a personal need. I'm doing it for me. Mm -hmm. I want this, or I'm afraid of this. I never want this. And it will only work if you feel the same, but first it has to serve me. Uh, and so breaking it is breaking my own, my own uh, agreement and my own principle. And that's a character issue. So I think when people understand the gravity of setting up shop, of co-creating an architecture of a relationship, of co-creating a culture that is uniquely ours mm -hmm. with our own ethos, then, then we're talking about a relationship uh, set of ethics uh, that is not to be trifled with. Um, just like you know, certain laws or religious laws are not to be trifled with. For many people, it's an Old Testament God that will smite them. Mm -hmm. For us, it's another partner that'll say, you can't do that. And if you do, I'm out. That has to be an agreement though, uh, doesn't it? I it mean, so, so, so um, yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to leave, you know, conceptualize all that you're saying with, uh, with both my, my clinical and my personal um, development also. Uh, let me ask you this. So, so when's the best time probably i'm thinking the best time to learn this stuff is before you get married like premarital oh, yes. and if and if you're in your 20s or so and your brain's not even totally online i mean <laughs> like how often um, 20 year olds are going to be very offended by that but <laughs> it, it, it's i say on, it all the it's, time I say it's it on, time. it's online um it's online it's just not fully cooked <laughs> Until and, about twenty six. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, and also for as far as my journey, and I wrote about it in my book Beyond Messy Relationships, which is is an intense and dramatic memoir. But I also show up as a therapist at the beginning of each of the chapters to give people wisdom and insight into their own uh, lives. But so, yes, I so forty years of marriage. Let's say you you go through these different stages. You go through uh, the the newlywed stage. You go through little kid stages. And so, I guess my question is: um, We're talking about character development in our long term marital relationships, and how how has how how do you permeate? How do you um, is, is, in other words, is this principle of governance, is that something that can like you, it's like the 10 commandments and you don't, <laughs> you don't break it forever and ever for 40 years, or, or do you alter it as time goes on and, um, based upon whatever stage of life? Yes. 
um, this is a living document or a living idea. Uh, remember, we're governed by ideas. Mm -hmm. You and I have ideas of how things ought to be, but um, but there's a problem if we don't if we're not on the same page with those ideas. Uh, we'll be we'll be pointing in different directions. We'll be governing according to a different culture. My culture is the one I grew up with. Yours is the one you grew up with. Um, we have to co-create a new one based on our lives fit to. Uh, uh, fit to what we want today, not mm -hmm. what someone else wanted. Mm -hmm. And so everything in terms of governance, governance can only be done with prior agreement mm -hmm. and prior permission to, uh, to enforce. Otherwise, there'll be trouble. So that's why we want people to think ahead, even if you are married, now is still the time to re-sculpt because we're constantly sculpting this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we're constantly putting in guardrails as we go because we're moving through time. We're moving through time. Now, people will change, but generally, if a couple is, uh, is secure functioning, they change together more than they don't. When couples, partners are very distant and they, they are in a drift, they're too siloed, right? Too, uh, too independent, and they're drifting they will start to get interested in outside things and, uh, and they will no longer uh, be able to influence each other. So that there is a problem. But when people are really good and they're working well together, they influence each other. And so they're changing more at the same time together, unless they're really different ages, right? Mm -hmm. If, mm -hmm. if partner, partners are out of cohort, meaning uh, you know, the, the, the difference is more than 10 years, depending on what age they are, they could hit different developmental plateaus where they want different things. That's mm -hmm. possible. But generally speaking, people are moving in tandem together because they're a team and they're constantly influencing each other, becoming more alike. That sounds so wonderful and ideal, but it's nature. It's Okay, it is nature. It's so, only when people aren't getting along that they congeal and they, like a Venn diagram, they will no longer influence each other because there's too much threat in the system. Ah, I gotcha. So it is the threat. And you the talked threat. about the, the, the um, capital T versus the little t. That's right. Uh, maybe you can explain that a little bit when it comes to threat. Sure. Well, so, so threat happens. Threat uh, is we're threat animals, meaning like all other, uh, uh, all other animals, especially uh, mammals, uh, uh, we have to scour the environment for cues that suggest that we might be hurt. And if we did get hurt, then we have more cues to look and scan for. So we come to the table as partners with a history going all the way back to childhood. And the one reason that the adult romantic relationship is so bloody difficult is because it has the longest memory. Mm -hmm. It has a memory that's really strongly before the age of 12. And, uh, and we're proxies for that time and for the caregivers that we had at that time, which is why it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a memory system that is constantly being triggered. Plus we pair bond by recognition so the chances that you have the bite that fits my wound and I have the bite that fits your wound, is about a hundred percent. Wow. So wow. that's nature, <laughs> that's nature. It's not personal. Uh, and so that makes it hard in that no other relationship anima animates those features mm. uh, as much. If you think your friend is really easy, marry them and you'll find out. Uh, it's just this relationship that is really hard. And and if we can harness it and understand it, we can actually heal our past. We can actually grow out and grow up. We can actually do amazing things. Unfortunately, the average human being doesn't understand this, does the least amount possible, is energy conserved, and will probably repeat their, their childhood history. Wow, that is so true. And of, of course, you know, in imago therapy, yeah. it is, is a subconscious agenda to complete what has not been completed in childhood. And you, you, it's this, this longing to, to grow and grow up. I, I mean, that's really the, 
that's really our invitation, isn't it? We need to grow up. <laughs> we um, don't. <laughs> I, I mean, we, yeah, this is about growing up, really. It really is about growing up and being our own person and making decisions as best we can. We're still automatic creatures about 90%, 99% of the day. So we're still going to do stupid things, but we can pick and choose um, you know, what we're going to do, not going to do. And when we have a, a team member who insists on it because we're trying to do business together, that accelerates as long as we, uh, as long as we do it in the right spirit, right? We both, we both want to limit and push each other to get what we want. Uh, and we give each other full permission to do that. And, uh, and so we work on how we're going to manage each other every day. Wow. I, I have a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. So, so a, a couple, let's just say a couple that has a long-term marriage and they come in to see you or to go through one of your programs uh, and they learn this maybe for the first time ever after having a track record of many decades of being in their own like parallel lives growing apart. Um, what is... I, I don't know if I, if you would, maybe you know the answer to this, maybe you don't, but what's the likelihood that that couple is going to, to make an about face and change their whole perspective and way of relating to each other to really get this and, and thrive and move forward? Uh, very high because, uh, so like I said, very simple ideas, very hard to do. <laughs> um, however, it's been done. All you have to do is look at history, human history, even to today. It's been done and being done all the time, even with arch enemies, even with people uh, who've been uh, enemies their whole lives. Uh, uh, they have a common interest. They find commonality really fast and they minor P's and Q's because they have to work together. Cop mm -hmm. car partners, people in the military, people on teams, people in, in situations like I have some homeless people who uh, are, uh, you know, uh, not mentally healthy as okay. well. Mm -hmm. They do it. How do they do it? They didn't come from great backgrounds. Well, they depend on each other because their lives are constantly being threatened from the outside. So they have to work together. They have to have each other's backs. They have to understand one another. Cop car partners, they didn't pick each other. They don't come necessarily from great backgrounds, but they have something in common. They're interdependent because their lives depend on each other. They have to work together. They spend all these hours telling each other everything. They call each other up for things. Their relationship is so tight that their marriages suffer. Mm. Uh, the same with people in special forces. Mm -hmm. You can't be in special forces unless you buy the whole idea that the person to your left and right, they matter more than you because they're going to save your life. That is a whole different orientation of weism. It's a whole different wow. orientation of interdependency. Couples do not have that orientation. <laughs> Couples are oriented towards a one person think, me, my, I, and you, 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 unless they're feeling good and then we'll be collaborative. But as mm. soon as I'm not feeling good, I take care of my interests. Mm. And that's, the, that's a human problem. It's a human problem. And the only thing that's reined that in is the realization that you and me are tied together, our fates are tied we have to move together in lockstep or we will not move. We mm. will not go anywhere. We will not get anything. We will not create anything. We'll be stuck fighting uh, uh, each other. The war will be in the foxhole and that's dumb. But that is all of us. We're all this way. <laughs> wow. And, and it, but it takes two people who yes. want to, who want yes. to do the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, want, <laughs> we both want to go here. I'm pointing here. We both yeah. want to go, are you sure you're pointing there? Yes, it's here. We want to go here. Okay. We're going to go there by hook or by crook. Um, and so and so, when we p push and limit each other to get there, we, we say, okay, that's annoying, but, I, but good because I want to go there too. We can do that. Two people can do that, but we got to make sure we're pointing in the same direction yes, first. Yes, that. And if one person says, sure, I'll go there. No, that's not going to work. I got to really want that. <laughs>
<laughs> God, I really want I'm that. I'm so I glad. I'm so glad you're addressing that. Oh my goodness. That needs to be addressed with such animation as for yeah. sure, for sure. Well, what kind of, uh, what would you tell a woman who is listening to this right now and does not have that cooperation and she's done everything that she's known how to do? I would and say. Yeah. I would say male or female, uh, I would say it doesn't really matter your gender. I know this is gendered, but it doesn't matter your gendered. In these unions, it's equal power, equal authority, or go home. Uh, if, if you don't have equal power and authority, it's because you've given it up, because there's nobody who can say that you don't have that unless you are in slavery or in a dictatorship, which you selected yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you can only work with someone who's willing to play this game, which is we work as a team or love you, but sayonara. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing that keeps us from doing this, and this is a serious issue, is the attachment system. The attachment system is a biological mandate that says, I cannot quit you. That's a problem because if I can't quit you, that means I'm stuck uh, in being forever unhappy in, in a relationship that is not fair or just and is not, uh, uh, not happy, right? And that's a problem. If I can't quit you, then I'm kind of sunk because I have no leverage anymore. Mm -hmm. The only leverage I have is to make sure that I realize and my partner realizes this is not childhood. This is not unconditional love. This is adulthood symmetry. This is pay to play. Mm -hmm. you, pay, you play. You don't pay. You don't play. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, um, we have to see it the same way. That doesn't mean we see everything the same way. That means that we, um, that we may want how we get our love, affection, admiration, and so on differently, but we both say we want that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That can be arranged. Mm -hmm. So we have to agree and we have to play it as if we're mutual stakeholders or the problems that uh, people complain about will be, uh, uh, will be recurrent and that will never work. So it's really time to have a uh, sit down and talk about the structure of the relationship and why go forward. What's the point of going forward if we're not equals and we're not co-creating this, this house, mm -hmm. this, this milieu, this uh, environment that we ourselves are responsible for, period, full stop. Mm -hmm. and, in, and in couples, we have a saying, no angels, no devils. Where there's one, there's always the other. Mm -hmm. No passengers. Cannot be a passenger in this because there's only two pillars of this union. Um, uh, both have to pull their weight. Both have to hold each other to account. And it's purpose-centered, not feeling-centered. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you set up a purpose to protect feelings and to allow feelings to emerge that are good. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't, you, know, you don't set up a principle that says... Um, I want you to make me feel good. Uh, nobody can, that's not actionable. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. But right. you can put in principles that are based on, on action, um, actionable items, behaviors that are more likely to bring about feelings and protect feelings um, than uh, making it feeling-centered. Yeah, I, yes, I, I wholeheartedly agree and, and so what you're talking about is if there are not two that are willing to do it, then that really is a deal breaker on, the, deal on breaker. that. Yeah. And, and so to give hope to the person who is trying to work and, and make a marriage work and being willing then to, to branch off and, and value their own dignity and their value and their worthiness as a human being, a single human being to break out of that. Uh, I think so many times it's, it's like you need to, to save your life because you have saying, to, yeah, yeah. It is life is short and we're all mm -hmm. going to be dead soon. We don't know mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. and also we're in charge of everybody. And mm -hmm. so when generals fight, soldiers die, when parents uh, uh, as a couple, and a couple is not functioning well, they're not taking good care of each other. Um, the kids are watching. Mm 
Mm. And so nobody's benefiting mm. from a union that is too unfair, unjust, and sensitive, and mm. not collaborative or cooperative. Nobody. Mm -hmm. And so it's it it has to be done, and it has to be done sooner than later. And it's actually nonviolent because we're saying, look, uh, it's time to re up and, and renegotiate. Um, mm. What's in it for both of us to go forward? How does it mutually benefit both of us? And if it doesn't mun uh, mutually benefit both of us, let's figure out if we can make it so. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, uh, again, unions have been forged um, among various different people, different cultures, different languages forever. Mm. And so to say that that can't be done because we're different is crap. Mm. Um, everybody mm. can find where they can agree. Um, now, and then you have to define how you want that thing. So, uh, so we both want to feel safe and secure. How do we want to feel safe and secure? Well, for me, it's this. For you, it's that. That mm -hmm. can be arranged. Mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. absolutely have to do it. And I have to make sure that you get it in the way you need so that you are constantly feeling safe and secure. So say I. That is honoring our humanity, isn't it, Dr. Stan? Yeah. It's like it's honoring each other, and that is so very vital. Oh, my goodness. This has been a remarkable time. <laughs> I just really, I, I have so enjoyed this, and I, I have so many other questions, but I can't ask because it's way, <laughs> way past our time together. I will, so, say, I will say one thing because it's a practice, folks. This mm, is an orientation. It's not a school. It's not a skill set. Mm, it's a culture. It's an ooh. culture. It's an orientation. If you want to know what I'm talking about, do an experiment and take some kind of uh, one of those workout bands and get your partner's permission, tie your inner thighs together, do that for <laughs> the entire day. You have to go- Oh, to I love it. Together. Yes. <laughs> you have to do everything together. Um, and then you'll learn what I'm talking about. If you pull against each other, that hurts. If you pull against each other, you don't go anywhere. If you don't coordinate, you'll fall. You have to work together. That mm. is what I'm talking about. That's an orientation. Wow. Wow. And, um, and if you mess up, you're going to mess up repair fast mm, fast within 30 minutes or less right just fall in, <laughs> learn to fall on your sword learn <laughs> to apologize mm. there's a reason we invented amends mm. that holds relationships together wow wow this is so valuable it's kind of like that three-legged race when you were a kid and, exactly. and doing it like that so that is so very profound thank you so much how can folks get in touch with you because i know you have a multitude of resources by the way i love what you include in your books these very practical exercises like looking at each other in in the eyes and uh wow you you give so much but yeah how can folks get in touch? and i just finished a book i just sent it in uh it's a book of complaints so oh. this book is organized by complaint um the What's the, what is the title the, in, the, um in each other's care oh wow oh my goodness i'm gonna pre-order it for sure okay <laughs> um and people can find me through the pact p-a-c-t institute.com mm -hmm. just by going stan at the pact institute.com uh, there you can find if you're a therapist or a psychologist a psychiatrist we do trainings all over the world, all throughout the year. Mm. You can find that schedule there. And if you're a couple and you want to come to one of our couple retreats, we do that online um, uh, throughout the year, uh, all over the world. And you can also find that information there. And we're doing a live one in Spain, the south of Spain, Ooh. at the end of this year at a monastery. Oh, wow. Year. Thank you so much for all that you are doing in this world. And... Wow, I just love the the orientation and, and the reality of, of everything that you've shared. And thank you so much for making such a big impact for, for therapists you. like myself. Thank same, you. And same for you, Judy. <laughs> you. All right. You take right. care. Be well. Bye-bye. This concludes part two of our series, Simple Ideas. They are challenging, but worth it. It still takes two. Here's my three takeaways about what Dr. Tatkin has taught us. Number one, this is a practice, not a skill set. 
Number two, it's an orientation, a culture. And number three, life is too short. So when you mess up, because you will, learn to repair quickly. What's your takeaway? Go to betterrelationshipsbetterlife.com. Share what resonates with you and do it quickly before you forget. In the meantime, you don't want to miss the next episode in which I interview my mentors, Dr. Harvell Hendricks and Dr. Helen LaKelly Hunt. Oh my goodness, they are hugely instrumental in my development as an Imago therapist, and you will absolutely fall in love with this couple. Stay tuned to episode number 10, entitled Oprah and the Pioneers of Connection Beyond Conflict. Until then, I'd love for you to share, subscribe, rate, and comment in the streaming platform of your choice. See you next time.